day 632 of self-isolation and day 14 of COVID-19 work at home and I'm starting to go a little crazy. So it's gotten a little warm lately. Actually it's gotten pretty darn, well I'm not going to say hot, it's gotten warmer. It is kind of annoying going around doing anything because I tend to sweat easily and everybody just looks at me like I got a fever or something. I don't have a fever. I'm just warm. I thought about taking off my uh, shop coat here, but when I think about it, unleashing that amount of sexiness onto the world could have more devastating consequences than COVID-19. So. I decided to just stay at home and work on a project and sweat a little bit. So a couple months ago, I made this hammer. It's a nice little hammer. The problem is, I made it out of pine, which is what I had at the time. And pine, is pretty much anybody knows, with a little bit of knowledge of wood, can tell you that it's not a good material. It's too soft. And you can kind of see there why. I haven't even used this very much. I use it mostly for smacking dowels into holes. So it's definitely not made for any type of high joinery stuff. And I made it pretty quick and dirty. I mean, it, it, was, it was okay. It was, it was a fun build to make. A fun video to make, too, because I did it all in black and white. But uh, I need something a little tougher. And the more I'm starting to learn about joinery and all the fun that goes along with it, the more I'm realizing I actually need something a little bit more heavy duty. So, thankfully, Big Blue is open during these dark times. So I can run down and grab a piece of wood. Now, as with most big box stores, they don't have a huge selection of hardwood. But... They do have red oak, which is a pretty good hardness for a mallet. I have some cherry, but when I looked at the Jenka hardness scale, red oak beat out the cherry. So I picked myself up a piece, four by one by eight, and I am going to almost recreate the mallet with some changes. Let's draw it up. Okay, I rather like the shape of this mallet. Um, I think the ends need to be tilted down a little bit more because when you think about it, hammering is a circular motion. It's not a straight up and down motion. So, I like the curve of this. This one's crooked, but it's curved and I think I need to angle these in just a lot, little bit more. Two, this right here, I just made this out of a stick of oak, I think it was, that I had uh, cut down off the bank of a uh, river a while back. And I uh, cut it down and carved it up and fit it in there. So, but this time, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try a, a pre-made wedge so that the whole mallet goes together at once rather than putting the head together and then sliding in the handle. So looking at the one by four, the whole thing fits on there. So I don't have to worry too much about the size of it. I'm just going to copy the dimensions of this and then change them up a little bit. shape that I will be trying to get the hammer done in. Um, I don't know how much of that I'm going to actually put on the video because that was a long pain in the ass trying to figure out how to draw straight lines and get perfectly square 
uh, angles and all this kind of stuff. Um, there's the handle. It's going to have a little, uh, I don't know what you call it down here, about a little pommel, I guess, underneath the, the hammerhead. And then right down into the... And then we'll see what kind of, if I want to do any design flourishes later on. But let's get started with the wood. Since, uh, since I'm making this mostly to start working with hand tools, I'm going to try and make it with all hand tools. No guarantees though. Okay, for, before I continue, I want to talk about my saw. I had read some good things online, watched some videos of these uh, style saws, and I uh, decided to pick one up. I like it. Um, the western saw tended to give me tendonitis in my elbow area. Um, the main problem I have with this, and this might just be the brand, I don't know, um, the rip side, the rip side of the saw, works great both cross cutting and ripping. The cross cut side, which is the bigger side, doesn't work for she yeah, it doesn't work. Um, I don't say it doesn't work, but it binds up, it, it grabs <clears throat> too easily. So I end up using the uh, cross cut side or for the rip side for just about everything. And you can kind of see the fine teeth there. It actually, using just the rip side, cuts pretty quick um, through just about anything. You just saw me cutting through that oak. Um, I tried using the cross cut and it went a lot slower than the rip side. So, yeah. Although maybe I'm doing that wrong. Maybe this is the rip side. Well, I'll have to rip this piece down and find out. judge me. Okay. Back to the saw. I was wrong. <clears throat> the fine teeth here are for cross cutting. The bigger teeth are for ripping and it works rather well for both. If you can saw a straight line, which I apparently cannot. Will I recommend it? Sure, it's inexpensive. It was about twenty-five dollars down at Big Blue. I think you could tell by the brand name where I got it from. Um, the blade is a little bit loose, but not that much. And uh, yeah, I really like this saw. Back to the build.
So at this point, I'm not at all happy about the way that this mallet is turning out. As usual, I tried to do something beyond my skill level, and it turned out looking like crap. But it's wood, and it's a mallet. I can reshape it once the glue dries. But for now, I'm going to try and make a second one, but not putting the curves in it, just making it a straight up mallet. Let's get to working on that one. Saw me cut some uh, wood like this. I decided that uh, I'm going to put this on the outside. I'll make an extra thick hammer. Put this on the outside as decoration. This is uh, what the hardware store or what the wood stores like to call rustic cherry. Basically, just cherry with some nasty ass knots in it. So, yeah. We'll give that a shot.
So looking at this knot, I like the way these knots look. And if I were the kind of person that used epoxy resin, then I might fill it with epoxy resin and leave it clear. But I'm not, so I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. I might just cover it with a layer of super glue to seal it. I don't know yet. Now this side, definitely much more character, but you can, there's a lot more loose detrius inside, and you can tell, you can see the channel marks here, that uh, termites were in this wood at one point, or some kind of wood burrowing insect. So, yeah, so I'm going to try and grind that out inside. Okay then, so I am complete. Now, as I was working on this one, I didn't uh, I didn't like the way it was turning out. Uh, having a hard time just cutting straight lines, really. And there's not a lot of straight lines on this, but just maintaining it. But once I got it all done, uh, I kind of like how it turned out. Now. The inlay here, I've never done an inlay before, so this was just kind of a spur of the moment kind of thing to uh, spruce it up a little bit. But this is uh, just cottonwood dust from uh, some of my cottonwood carvings that I've done. I like to save the dust so it can use it for different things. Um, but it has a nice contrasting brown, which I really like. And I actually kind of like the way this hammer turned out, or this mallet. mallet. Um, yeah, you can see the top there. I'll get some videos of them uh, in close-up after this. Now the other one, now because I didn't like how this was turning out as it was working, I decided to go ahead and start another one. And I had some problems. My bandsaw, for some reason, is not tracking right. So anytime I put anything big into it, goes to the side and starts cutting to the side. Even if I'm using a jig to keep it cutting forward, it pulls it off to the side and, and ended up uh, canting some of the angles on it. But even though it did that, I like the way that it turned out. I like the shape that it ended up making. Even though it's not a traditional square it ended up looking pretty cool, especially with the uh, with the knots on the side. Um, those knots were pretty full of uh, nastiness. All the rotten bits I was able to uh, dremel out, and then I sealed them up with some super glue, which made made it look really shiny on the inside. And yeah, I mean, I, th I think they turned out looking beautiful. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments. So these are some nice hammers, mallets, that hopefully I will be using for a long time. Now I did use, again, I used the True Oil to finish it. Gunstock finishing. This is a, what does it say, a linseed oil and urethane mixture. So it's kind of like a yeah, linseed oil and your polyurethane or something like that. So it goes on easy. It dries fairly quick. 
um, 24 hours usually to dry. I let it set out in the sun and it dried significantly faster. I don't know if it's good to let it set out in the sun, but I did. And uh, yesterday it was a nice, mostly warm day. So today, not as warm, but it still dried to be able to touch it in about half an hour. Now I want to start using it and I'll probably put on another coat, but uh, it still looks really, really nice. So I hope you liked these builds. I'll be working on some more stuff soon and get some more carving started. And yeah, so thank you for watching. Have a wonderful, safe day.